In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to make use of the Create Job Sheet. Imagine to yourself you have just designed a project and now you are going to either go to the machine yourself or send it to a CNC operator. Now most CNC's are controlled by a PC that does not have the design software installed on it, so how to remember all the details, from the size of the material, to the tool, to the speeds and feeds, and all of the other tool paths and their parameters, this is where a job setup sheet comes in. It gives you a visual representation of the vectors you want to cut, the detail of the material setup, the toolpath summary with all the toolpaths that you are going to run, followed by the individual toolpath breakdowns themselves. These are produced in a standalone HTML file which can be opened offline in any web browser so they can be sent, saved, or printed ready to look at before cutting. For this tutorial, we're going to look at three different files, and each file will yield us a slightly different job sheet. First of all, let's open up an existing file, and we're going to navigate over to our Tutorials folder, and inside a folder called Toolpath-Setup-Sheets-Guide, we're going to find the three different files. The first one we're going to look at is going to be widget-vectors.crv, so let's select that, and then we'll go ahead and click Open. Now straight away in our 2D view, you'll see the vectors that we have set up for our Vectric widget. If we look at our Layers tab, you'll see that we have four different layers set up, and each one of these layers has specific vectors on it. Let's have a look at our Toolpaths tab, and we'll pin that down. First thing we're going to look at is our Material Setup, so let's just click Set. And you'll see that we have a thickness of our material at 0.375. Our XY datum is set to the bottom left-hand corner. Our Z0 is off our material surface. We have some rapid Z gaps set up, and we have a home start position set up. So let's just go ahead and click OK. Now we're gonna get a warning. That's because one of our tool paths is gonna cut through our material, but I know that already because one of these is a profile cut, and I wanna cut through my material into my waste board just a little bit so that I can pop this part out easily. So let's click OK. We have four different toolpaths already set up, and each one of these toolpaths reference one of these vector layers over here. So let's go ahead and see what does what. Let's tile our view. Let's turn off all of our layers, and then we'll start through going through these one at a time. Let's select our recessed rectangles, and let's look at the toolpath that relates to that. Let's preview that, and we'll see what we get. Let's go ahead and have a look at our text. We'll preview our text toolpath. And again, let's have a look at our drill holes. We'll preview the visible toolpath. Let's look at our, our last layer here, which is the outline shapes, and that's going to give us our profile cutout and preview visible toolpath. Then we can just double click on this waste material. So we have a varied selection of toolpaths here. We have a pocket toolpath, a profile toolpath, a drill holes toolpath, and then another profile toolpath. And we know that this last profile toolpath cuts through our material. So let's close this down. Now let's say we have decided that we are happy with these toolpaths and the way they are cutting in our previews, but we're not going to get around to either cutting this tomorrow, maybe passing it off to our CNC operator, or actually just need to move down to a other computer that doesn't have our software installed on it. How do we get the information for these toolpaths to either that other person or in a format that we can bring along with us. And to do that, we're going to use our Create Job Sheet icon here. Now, there are two different ways we can access this icon. We can simply left click on it, and what that will do is it'll pop up a Windows File Explorer window, and we can choose where we want to save off our HTML document that this will create. And then we can navigate over to that later on our own and open that up at our leisure or when we need it. We can also hold down our control key while we're left clicking that icon and it will automatically open up the HTML file in our default internet browser once we're done saving it off. And for this time around, we're going to hold down our control key and then click the create job sheet icon. And when I do that, it's going to ask us where we'd like to save this off. And I already have one previously saved off. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and then click save. It's going to want me to replace it, so I'm going to say yes. So right off the bat, we can see our job sheet here. At the very top of our job sheet, we have the file name that this was saved from. 
and then we have our job layout. Currently, right now, we see our material block, which is that 9 inch by 9 inch square. Then inside of that, we have one profile vector. You may be asking yourself why we only see the profile vector. Well, that's because when we went and saved out this job sheet, if we look back at our software, you'll see that was the only layer that was turned on. I can choose to show what layers will show up in this part of my job sheet by turning on the ones that I would like to see referenced there. This might be a very powerful tool if you have different job sheets or you have one file that you want to save out different job sheets from and you want to have this visual reference changed so that you can easily see what job sheet you're picking up or what job you're about to run. Let's go ahead and maximize this again. Move on to the next section. This section here is our material setup. We have our material block dimensions. We have our home start position. We have our datum setup. We have our XY start position set up, and then we have our clearance set up. These icons look exactly like what we have in our software, so they're easily referenced visually. And then of course, it's really important that we have our clearance here. This is a great reference for a CNC operator or you at a later date to know exactly how much clearance you have above your material that's safe for hold downs. The next bit here is our toolpath summary. This lists all of our different toolpaths, the tools that we're going to use, and the estimated times for those. And below that, we break out each one of our toolpaths separately. You'll see them listed with the names, then also the icon of the actual toolpath type, and all the relevant information inside the block. So we have the toolpath info, this is a pocket toolpath the feeds and speeds, the estimated time, the tool info, the name, the tool type, maximum cut depth, pass depth, step over, and then also your tool number in case you're using an automatic tool changer. Let's have a look at this last tool path. You'll see that it's the profile cutout and the maximum cut depth is in red. This references the fact that this tool path will cut through your material and slightly into your spoil board and will be a great reminder that this is going to happen so you can make sure that this is the result that you want. Let's go back to the top of this again. And let's close out. File, and we'll close down this file. We don't need to save that off. And then we'll go ahead and open up our next file, which is going to be a file that's set up with different sheets. So let's select this DXF batch layout.crv file and open this up. Okay, you'll be able to see here that we've got several different sheets set up. Now this cabinetry file was set up using a third party piece of software, exported out a set of cabinets, and then we imported it into our software and set it up onto sheets and nested everything together nicely. Another thing I want you to notice is that on sheet number one, there aren't any tool paths right now. So let's have a look at our layers tab and we'll see all the different layers that we have set up here. And if we have a look at our tool paths tab, we'll pin that down. You'll see that we have a bunch of different tool path groups set up here and each group is set up with the sheets name. Now here in our little drop down, we can choose to see all of our different sheets, all the tool paths that are on each sheet. And you can see that there are quite a few different tool paths here. And again, sheet number one doesn't have any tool paths. So if we want to go ahead and print a job sheet for this particular operation, because there are different sheets, every sheet will have its own job sheet. So really, there's no reason for us to click on our create job sheet icon here, holding down the control key, because that will just open up one of them. We want to actually have a look at all of them. So let's just single click that with our left mouse button. We're going to give it a name, which it just chooses the file name. And what it's going to do is it's going to amend to the end of this an underscore sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four, all the way up to the number of sheets that you have. So let's click Save. Then we'll bring up our Windows File Explorer. And you'll see once we've navigated over to that tutorials folder, all of the different sheet job sheets here have been listed out. So let's have a look at this first one. Now you'll see again, like before, we have our file name, we have our job layout here, and it says specifically for sheet number two. We also have some job notes listed in here. When the file was created, the user had 
added some notes to the file, so they'll be listed here. This is a great spot for you to add in information that you might need to know down the road or need to remember for the next time you run this set of tool paths, or maybe the CNC operator needs to know that, so it'll be on each and every job sheet. Below that, of course, is our material setup. We have our tool path summary. There's only one tool path for this particular sheet. And then below that, we have the tool path sheet name, the tool path name, and then the same information that we saw before. Let's go ahead and close this one down and have a look at the second job sheet. This is for sheet number three. You'll see again, we have our visual representation of our vector layers that were turned on. We exported this out, the same note, but then you'll see we have our tool path summary. There's many, many more tool paths here. And then again, like we saw before, all of those are broken out into their own individual tool paths. So you know what each one will be doing. Let's go ahead and close this down. Close this down. Now, if you don't know where to add notes to your file, so you just go up here to edit and go down to notes. And you can just put in whatever notes you need to put in here. And then you just click OK and they'll be saved off with your file. So now let's go ahead and close this one down and take a look at our third and final file, which will be a double-sided job. Let's go ahead and select that and click Open. Hey, let's have a quick look around this file. Let's have a look at our Layers tab. You'll see there are three different layers. If we look at our Tool Paths tab, we have a bunch of different tool paths here. And then you'll see that there's an indication that we are looking at the top of our job, or these are the tool paths that are on the top of our job. We know this is a double-sided job because we have the option here to switch sides of our job. Each side of our job has a different set of tool paths. And then also we have an indication of which way we're going to flip our job when we turn it over. Now with this, because there are two different sides, you'll need to export out two different job sheets and you'll need to do that from the proper side. So if I want to export a job sheet for the top side, I'll make sure that I'm on the top side. If I want to export out one for the bottom side, then I want to make sure that I'm on the bottom side. Let's go back to our top side and we'll go ahead and hold down our control key and then click the create job sheet. We'll go ahead and put it in the same spot as the others and we'll just click Save. Now there's a couple extra things with this job sheet. First of all, as always, we have our file name here. We have our job layout. We don't have any notes section here because the user didn't put any notes in. But then we have these two extra spots here. We have an indication of what side of the job you're cutting and then the flip direction. And this is, of course, very important when you're doing these double-sided jobs to know exactly what side you're cutting and then also which way to flip the material. The next spot, as always, we have our tool path summary and then we have our list of tool paths and then one that's going to cut through our material. Let's close this down. Let's flip to the other side. Let's go ahead and save off our job sheet for that one. And we are going to go ahead and save that off. And this is our second side. You'll see that the side has changed, but the flip direction is still the same. And there's an indication here that this time around, we are going to be zeroing off our machine bed, not the top of our material. We can close this down. Now I'm just going to go ahead and save off a job sheet just by simply left clicking on this. And I want to show you that we actually have two introduction to two sided machinings job sheets and each one have been amended with the top or the bottom, depending on what side of the job it was exported from. Let's just go ahead and cancel that. And let's close this file down. Let's just take a second and talk about what you can do with your job setup sheet once you have it exported. Now, currently it's an HTML document, which means it'll open up into my default internet browser. Uh, I have Google Chrome installed, so that's what I'm using here. And to access my print options, I simply just need to right click on my background and choose to print. Your browser might be slightly different. So this is just kind of an overview of what you might want to look for. And you might need to actually do a little bit of searching around in your browser, but it should be pretty much like this. So here I'm gonna choose to print. 
Now in my print dialog, I have an opportunity to choose my destination. I can use this drop down here to choose my printer or Maybe in this case, I might wanna save it off as a PDF, that way I can distribute this job setup sheet a little bit easier. If that's the case, then I can just go ahead and check out my more settings. Now these options will be the same if you're going to be choosing a printer or saving it as a PDF file. The options that I do wanna point out are down near the bottom here, which is the margins, and then the options here for headers and footers and background graphics. You may or may not want to remove or minimize your margins if you want to. Notice when I did click minimum, then I lost my headers and footers. If I go back to default, you'll see that my headers and footers come back again. Obviously your headers and footers may be important for you internally, but externally they may not be so much where it shows the location of where the file is saved and also the date and the file name. If you wanna hide those, you can just simply hide those and show those. And in some cases, some of this won't render quite properly. You may or may not need to turn on your background graphics. It's just a good little option to know that's there. And then once you're done, you can either send it to your printer or save it off as a PDF. For now, I'm just gonna cancel out of that. We've included in our software a way for you to customize your job sheets. And to do that, we're gonna go up to our gadgets menu and we're gonna go down and look for the setup sheet editor. And if we click that, we have some options here on different ways that we can edit our job setup sheet. First of all, currently right now, we have the Vectric logo there. We can go ahead and add our own logo if we'd like to do that. Just keep in mind that this is gonna be how it will be scaled. So if you're using a square image, then it will be squished. The best sort of size that you're gonna to wanna to use or ratio would be more of a rectangle type image and that will replace our vectric image. You can also give it a new name if you'd like to. If you wanna put your company name in here, you can do that. You can change the colors. And then of course you can decide whether you want to include in different parts of the job sheet. So you see here they're numbered here in red and they're also numbered here. So you know that if you want to include the job notes, you can either choose to do that or not. Once you're all done making your selections, you can just click OK. It's probably best practice to restart your software after you go ahead and set these up. That way, the next time you save off a job sheet, you're ensured that all of these different settings will be taken into account. If you want to go back to the defaults, you can just go ahead and, of course, choose to restore your defaults. For now, I'm just going to click Cancel. And with that, that ends this guide to the job setup sheets.